Hello, in this video I'm going to implement simple ping pong uh, application. So we're gonna create two processes, ping process, that will send ping events to punk process, and punk process will respond back to the ping process by sending punk uh, uh, ev event. So the first thing we need to do, this is the, what I have here is an empty Scala SBT based project. So the first thing we need to do is to add um, two dependencies. The first one is gonna be core, perfect core. So we go here, it's a, mail in central um, and search for parapet yeah, and it's here then we go here so we just take this copy paste this line and add core dependency to our project and secondly we need to uh, choose between supported implementations of effect system and Scala. For instance, in this for this video, uh, I will use cat's effect. So let's copy cat's effect. Um, yeah, it's here. So just copy paste this line. And uh, you will probably basically have to um, refresh your project. So we'll just take a few seconds. All right. Um, all right. Let's just to make sure that we All right, so the first thing we need to do is basically create our process. Let's start by creating a ping process and then we will create punk process. So for the ping process, first of all, we have to import our required um, um, classes that we need it's going to be process and event so our ping process is going to be generic which means it will not depend on any particular implementation of the system and scala like it gets effect so that's why we have to use type constructor with one argument if you go here to the process you will see that it requires uh, it's generic and it expects a type constructor with one argument which is we have what we, we actually we, we have here so okay so the next step would be create a companion object and define API for our ping process so it's going to be let's say pink right pink is some identity which is gonna extend event right um right so that's it for our I api um now let's as you can see we have to implement uh abstract member handle handle receives mass events it's pattern match on events and produces program flows one step we missed here it's very very important is that we had to import dsl okay so what it does it automatically imports all available available um dsl 
operators that we, ca we can use to write our code, which is, if you will take a look here, receive, it take, it's a partial function. It takes an event and produces flow. This is the uh, type alias for um, our flow type, basically. If we go here, this is the free monad, so it's just a type alias for free monad. Okay, so um, first of all, each process has a life cycle, so it will receive two life cycle events, start and uh, stop. So we will first uh, handle handle the excuse me, start event, right? And we also need a punk process reference. All right. So this is just a reference to a process, not actual object or something like, I would say f physical object, but it's reference. So we can use it to send events. Basically, it only can be used to send events. Okay, so let's now, ah, we have to import our uh, API first, right? And then we will send our first ping event to pound process, all right? And then when a pound process will respond with pound event, we have to, um, so it bring, brings us to the point when we uh, need to create punk process. So let's create punk punk process. So we basically have to repeat the same steps. So I will just copy paste imports and okay. And then it's going to be generic extends process um, process. <laughs> Okay, all right. So then we're gonna to define API for our punk process, which is gonna be punk. Have some identity as well. Extends event. Uh, yep. And then also let's define a smart constructor for our um, punk process. Let's do this way process. Uh -huh. Okay. And here basically we have to do the same, import DSL and and pattern match on, we have to import also um, API from ping process because we need access to uh, ping event. Okay, All right. Then here is some identity, right? So the first thing that we going to do, we're just going to uh, write some uh, login information to uh, system output. Um, in order to do that, since it's, it's side effect, it's a factual computation, we have to wrap it with uh, eval uh, operator. So we call eval. Um, process 
receive ping. Okay. And then we have to respond back to ping process by setting pong event. So we using we're gonna use we sender, which gives us a reference to the sender. And then we can create uh -huh, we have to import our API for this process, which is Pong process it will import punk event punk and we'll go here and then we'll send response back to the ping process to the sender so basically at this point we don't know who, is, who the sender is it can be any process who sent a uh, ping request to this process to the punk process so we don't know and here, since we send ping to the pong process, so we basically waiting for um, response, right? So, so basically we we going to log some information as well here. Um, let me check the day. Okay, so ping process received punk All right and then we're going to repeat we're going to send ping but we'll increment our identity to punk process right and let's add some some timeout because It's gonna be too <laughs> very fast. Um, let's say we will send pin request after uh, one second, right? Cool. So this is basically it. Now the last step is to create our ping pong up and since we're using cats effect we need to extend cats up cats up and here we create we're going to create our processes so the first oh, I, I don't like this okay let's change it a bit Okay, all right. Core mm, process, right. And then here we're going to create uh, punk process first. Uh, yes, it's going to be our punk process. So as you can see here, we pass uh, concrete uh, effect type, so which is IO. And this is type with single, uh, it's, it's a generic type, basically type constructor with one argument, which satisfies our requirement, our type here. Let's now, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, let's add apply constructor for the ping process as well. Yeah. So here, I'm going to return F, F. Yep. Exactly. So now here we can create ping process, which is ping process IO and punk process ref. Okay. And then 
as you can see here we need to return sequence of process all right so uh, So ordering is not important. It can be uh, arbitrary. So pin the pump. Yes, so now we are ready to run our application. So let's run it. So as you can see, we have pin process receive pin request, and then pin request receive punk, and I just repeat over and over again. And one more thing that I already showed you how to use lifecycle when start. Let's add one more case for stop. just and just print some information let's say um, so it's going to be our pin process right right and let's do the same for fun process all right um yeah so now let's run up our application again and then click on exit button as you can see pawn received has been stopped and ping has been stopped. So yes, that's basically it. Thanks for watching. Bye.